In this episode, I wanted to give you an introduction to containers on Linux using LXC. We will look at what containers are as a concept, why they are useful, and then move on to a live demo of what a container looks like on a real system using LXC. Before we jump into the meat of the discussion, let's briefly talk about traditional virtualization for a minute. You start out with physical hardware, next you have the operating system, then the hypervisor. Finally, you have the virtual machine images which interface with the emulated hardware provided via that hypervisor, thus allowing you to create many self-contained systems. This is well understood, so let's move on to how this compares with containers. Containers have a similar foundation, starting with the hardware and operating system, but this is where things take a turn. Containers actually make use of kernel features called namespaces, cgroups, and chroots to carve off a contained area, and the end result looks like a virtual machine just without the hypervisor. The LXC project has said containers are like chroot on steroids. Basically, you're running a minimal operating system application code along with all the supporting libraries in a container, but using a shared kernel rather than a hypervisor. In a nutshell, containers are a method for isolation and resource control, much like traditional virtualization just without the hypervisor overhead. I think it's a fitting analogy to compare containers to traditional virtualization, because even though the technologies are different, the end result looks very similar from the user's and application's perspective. There is a term for the functionality which containers provide, called OS-level virtualization, and there is a great Wikipedia page that talks about it. The page has a table of various operating systems and their take on it, and you will notice that each operating system has a different name and implementation for it. For example, we have BSD Jails, Solaris Zones, and more recently, Containers on Linux. As you can see, the concept of OS-level virtualization is not new, and it goes back 30 years. The features which enable containers are actually part of the Linux kernel, and you use userland tools like LXC for the implementation. Although there are many kernel features used to create containment, while doing my research for this episode, I found three key features, those being namespaces, cgroups, and chroots. Namespaces allow you to isolate an application's view of the operating system in various ways. I think of namespaces as a method for creating your own little view of a system for mounts, user IDs, networking, and process trees. These are isolated from the rest of the system, similar to how you would create a chroot environment. Just apply the concept to mounts, users, and processes. If you are looking for more information on namespaces, check out the series of LWN articles linked to in the episode notes below. There is also an awesome presentation entitled Resource Management Linux Kernel Namespaces in Cgroups by Remy Rosen also listed in the episode notes below. Next, containers take advantage of cgroups, which I talked about in episode 14. Basically, you construct an isolated container using namespaces, and then you use cgroups to shape how the resources are consumed in that container. You can isolate and shape things like CPU usage, what CPU cores are used, memory usage, disk I.O., network I.O., amongst other things. One really cool thing about cgroups is that you also have resource accounting, so you can see what system resources were consumed by a given container. I highly recommend checking out episode number 14, linked to in the episode notes below. So at this point, we know at a high level what containers are in theory. They take advantage of key kernel features to construct an isolated environment for applications. And the end result looks very similar to traditional virtualization, but without the hypervisor overhead. So what is LXC then? Well, LXC is a set of user land tools which interface with the kernel's namespaces, cgroups, and other features to create and manage containers. I think it's worth noting that containers, the concept, and LXC are not one and the same, although LXC is an acronym for Linux containers. At least, this is my take on it. I think it's best if I give an example of what I'm talking about. Let's take databases, for instance. We all know what databases are in theory, then over here you have a bunch of products that implement that theory, concept, or idea of what a database is. With that thought in mind, we have containers, the concept, also called OS-level virtualization, on this side. Then we have products, tools, and libraries that implement it over here. So LXC is a product that implements the container theory or concept, and their software is called Linux Containers, or LXC for short. I hope this makes sense. I just wanted to highlight the distinction, because while researching this episode, 
I found people using the term Linux containers to either refer to LXC or the concept of containers as an isolation mechanism. I just think it's important to differentiate between containers, the concept, and container tools. Now that we know a little about what containers are in theory, why are they useful? Well, compared to traditional virtualization methods, containers will see near native performance because they are not emulating hardware, but we're actually taking advantage of kernel namespaces to provide our own little isolated view of the system. Typically, you can spin up a container in fractions of a second where booting a virtual machine takes much longer. I should also mention that LXC is not the only game in town. There is actually nothing stopping you from creating your own framework that would implement containers the concept, because after all, these features are available in the kernel. In fact, Google has been using containers for many years. There was actually a Wired article that highlights how Google runs Search, Gmail, and Maps from within containers on shared hardware using a massive orchestration system. There was a cool presentation by two Google engineers entitled, Let Me Contain That For You, listed in the episode notes below, which goes into some technical details. There was also a really cool talk by John Wilkes of Google, where he talks about containers and the orchestration system they use. Google is actually developing and open sourcing their tools via the Let Me Contain That For You project on GitHub. But development is still ongoing as Google decouples their framework from their infrastructure. Just like we talked about LXC being a tool that implements the containment concept, let me contain that for you, would also be a tool that implements it too. You might be wondering if containers are secure. Well, they're designed to be, but if a bug exists in the container implementation and it's exploited, containers are ultimately using a shared kernel, which could be used to break out of the container. However, this would obviously be considered a bug. Okay, so let's get on with the demo. For this demo, we'll be using CentOS 6.5 running the stock kernel. I've already installed LXC and configured a bridge device so that the host machine and the containers can talk to each other. If you're interested in how LXC was installed, please see the episode transcript below for full details. After you have installed the LXC package, you will see many commands starting with LXC. I'm just going to type LXC and then hit tab a couple times so that you can see them. These can be used for creating, starting, stopping, and connecting containers, amongst other things. Let's run LXC check config to verify our environment is configured correctly. Things are all green, so this is a good start. You will also notice that we have a section for namespaces. These are the main features used for isolation, like we talked about earlier in the episode. Then down here you have control groups. These are used for resource control. Now that we've verified our environment, let's move forward with creating our first container. LXC is nice enough to provide templates which can be used for creating common distros. Let's take a peek at user, local, share, LXC templates. And you'll notice there's quite a few in here. Okay, so let's create a container by using one of these templates. Let's run LXC create dash N for the container name. Let's call it episode 24 busybox then dash T for the template name, in our case, busybox. That's it. Since the container is completely isolated, it should have an operating system, supporting libraries, and your application code. The template can be used as a great starting point. On this system, the container's root file system is stored under user, local, var, lib, lxc. You can see that we have a folder titled with the container name. Let's go in there and have a look. There are two items, a config file for this container and a directory holding the container's root file system. Let's open up the config file and have a look. These are basically default settings for how the container will function. I'm going to copy a couple networking tweaks into here and then we can review what they do. So we're creating a virtual networking device, connecting it to our bridge BR0 device, and turning the device on. Now that we've configured networking, let's go ahead and start the container by running lxc start dash d, this puts the container into the background, dash n for the container name, in our case, e24 busybox. 
Let's look at the running processes to see if the container is there. Yeah, looks like it worked. Now you might be wondering what the heck, how come the container's processes are showing up under the host OS process list? This is where traditional virtualization and containers differ, like we talked about earlier. The container's processes are actually running under the host OS. Although there is an isolation via namespaces, and the container has its own little view of the world. I'll demonstrate this in a minute. Let's run lxc-info-n and then the container name. So episode 24 busybox. As you can see, our container is running and the process numbers match. The container has a network address and we're provided with some resource consumption statistics. Let's verify that this container is actually connected to the bridge by running brctl show. So we have the bridge device br0, the host eth0 is connected, and the container's virtual network adapter is too. I'm going to open an additional terminal window so that we can have one connected to the host OS and then we can connect one to the container. Okay, so the top window is our host operating system, then down here, let's connect to the container by running lxc-console-n and then the container name. Success, we're connected. You might remember earlier in the episode, the template said the username was root and the password was root as well. So let's go ahead and log in. Let's take a look at the process list by running ps. You will notice that the container cannot view the host operating system, but the host OS can see the containers. The host OS can also manipulate the container live without issues, since these are all just processes as far as it's concerned. As a test, within the container, let's run top. Then up in the top window, Let's verify we can see the new process. Let's try and kill it to see what happens. This works because all container processes are actually running on the host OS, just isolated via namespaces. This is where the performance benefit of containers comes in. You can also modify files within the container from the host OS on the fly. From within the container, let's create a file called testing123 and we'll put some test data in there. Then in the top window on the host OS, let's add an addition to that file and see what happens. Okay, so we've made our addition. Let's go back to the container and we'll cat the file to see if it worked. So at this point, I think you should have a fairly good understanding of what the concept of containers are, what LXC is, and why containers are so fast when compared to traditional virtualization. You get near native performance because the processes are actually running on the host OS. Before I end this episode, let's just look at the LXC info command again. There's some nice accounting information and you can shape these resources using C groups. I suggest you check out episode 14. Finally, let's stop the container by running lxc stop dash n and then the container name. Personally, I think the container ecosystem is about to explode with the rise of technologies like Docker, which acts as a wrapper around lxc to streamline the container workflow. Docker is actually developing their own library called libcontainer, which might eventually replace the lxc functionality. OpenStack is also throwing their support behind containers. Red Hat Enterprise 7 is said to support containers by default. Although the technology of containers has existed for many years, it is just now that we're finally getting automation software and tooling to make managing containers easier. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.